songs are quite amazing Beethoven, though his greedy, is a musical genius Each melody's a symphony that comes straight from the heart of Chopin Each problem a solution That is close at hand He's the drummer of the Mozart band The band are all together They're for one another And Mozart is the leader The leader of the Mozart band Sing together with the band, dance together with the band, laugh together with the band, for the Mozart band is here. Yes, the Mozart band is here. Music can have a magical effect on people. Sometimes if you're down in the dumps and you listen to music like this, it makes you feel like jumping for joy. On the other hand, if you feel shy or timid and listen to this, you might feel brave and daring. Or let us just say that if a brave person were to listen to something like this, he might feel scared or anxious, even frightened. And if he listened to something different again like this, he might become very sad. Some say it's not good to feel sad, but that's as ridiculous as saying that happy people are stupid. Sadness is a part of human nature like everything else, no better, no worse. And it was sadness which inspired Chopin to write The Sad Study, the music that is now playing. Please excuse me, I'm peeling onions for tonight's stew, so I can't help crying. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, this is no time to start talking about sadness because today's story starts with the showing of a fantastic video. I want to show you an island topped by a magnificent volcano which is almost 4,000 meters high. An island covered with lush tropical vegetation and surrounded by a wild and wonderful coastline and spectacular cliffs whose enormity takes your breath away. Beautiful golden beaches where you can enjoy the sea and the sun to your heart's content. And can anyone here tell me what this paradise with so many marvels is called? It's Tenerife. It's in the Canary Islands. Well done, Beethoven. You're so clever. Can't we watch a video about pirates? Would you like to go to Tenerife? To record a video, maybe? You oh, mean yeah. a free trip to Tenerife to make a video? That's a silly question. Oh, you bet we would, Professor. Some years ago, the famous singers Mel and Colic were pupils of mine. Mel and Colic? The famous singing duo Melancholic? Yes, they came to see me because they wanted to shoot a video in Tenerife with a children's band, and so I told them about you, the Mozart band. You mean Melancholic really want us to play with them? Unbelievable. In fact, here they come now. That's right, we want you guys to play with us in Tenerife. We also want to make a video together. Oh boy, you bet. Huh? Hey, by the sound of it, I guess not everybody's thrilled by the idea. So tell me, kid, that sad study by Chopin that you're playing there, am I right? Chopin never did like having titles given to his work. It's a really sad-sounding piece, don't you think? The truth of the matter is that Chopin has been what you might call unlucky in love recently. Ooh, that's tough. That kind of hurt can cause a lot of pain. Well, it all started in the spring when he went and fell head over heels in love with this amazingly beautiful freckled blonde. Yeah, but she turned him down flat, and we all know how painful that can be. It broke poor Chopin's heart, and when his heart gets broke, it stays broke. Well, there are lots of ways of soothing the pain, you know. Like coming to Tenerife with us, wouldn't you like that? A trip to Tenerife and a chance to shoot a video with the famous Mel. And Colic, okay, kid? 
Well, Chopin, what do you think? Huh? Oh, yeah, great. So who are they? Oh, please allow me to introduce you to the rest of the team. This is Mr. Spleen, the group's manager. I'm pleased to meet you. Oh, goodness, I do hope everything will be all right. And Miss Mirabalindo, our PR person. Oh, hi, guys. This is Magda. Super cool. Call me Bill. What did he say his name was? Call me Bill. That's a strange name. Well, he is a film director. This is my little museum where I keep my instruments and musical scores. Some of the things in here are extremely rare. Well, well. Oh, how super cool, awesome. Hi, This is wow. all very interesting. Hey, look over here. Just look at this harp. Wow, what a magnificent instrument. You've got a good eye. This is one of the most important pieces in my collection. And did you know that Harpo Merckx learned to play on this very instrument? Now I come to think of it, the main theme that runs throughout the whole video is that of a harp. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? I can see it all now, surrounded by the exotic and vibrant greenery of Tenerife. Oh, that's like totally wow. I mean, it's got class. Oh, it would just look mega super cool. Right, the whole video could revolve around the harp. You wish to take my harp all the way to Tenerife? Well, I'm sorry, my boy. That's just not possible. Oh, come on, Professor Salfar. Like, pretty please, Professor. I remember you used to say that's just not possible, and we ended up doing it anyway. Oh, is that right? Yes, Professor, exactly right. Well, seeing as it's you, I can't really refuse now, can I? Yeah. Oh, happy cool, far out. Oh, goodness, I hope everything will turn out all right. We use the harp on condition that the professor comes with us to Tenerife. All right, I'll come with you as long as you pay for the ticket. All right, Professor, so far you got a deal. Come on, Chopin, cheer up. Stop being so gloomy, will ya? We're all gonna go to Tenerife. Look, the Santa Cruz, the capital oh, of Tenerife. Oh, hey. And these must be the mountains of the moon. Okay, ready? Oh, goodness, I hope everything will be all right. And one, two, and three, action! After three, and three! This is an island, this is an island, an island in the sun. This is an island, a sunny, sunny all island, right, and an cut. island. Did he just say cut? Hey, what did we do wrong? Print it, that's a take. Let's go for the next one. Bell's into short shots. Even as short as all that? Oh, come on, Chopin. You gotta cheer up. How can he cheer up with you slapping him on the back? Why don't you stop pummeling the poor guy? Wow, I've never seen botanical gardens like this before. Yeah, it's Nature Man doing her thing. Quiet on the set now. Let's go. Okay, camera and action. One and two and... God, print that one. Wow, he really does like his shots to be short. Camera and action. After three and one, two, three. When you're young and you're in love and you look to the stars above, are they so shining? Why did you stop playing are they more? shining? I never said cut, so who told you to stop playing? What's the matter, Beethoven? What did you stop for? Well, the shot was going on for so long, I just thought that. I'm the director, and I'll tell you when to stop playing, and that's when I yell, cut, okay? This is the tidy. Take a good look at the highest mountain in Spain, 3,700 meters. Wow, a volcano. Come on, it's not active. Oh, well, I don't care. It's still a volcano. Very impressive. Oh, mega cool. Well, unload the gear here, take it further up the mountain, then we'll camp there. How about some help? I'm not in the mood, Mozart. If you don't mind, I'd rather stay here and keep an eye on all his gear. Okay? All right? Hey, now wait! I'll oh, leave him alone. I want you to take special care of my harp, Chopin. I'm leaving it in your hands. depressed all the time it must be well really depressing we should do something to try and cheer him up well I suppose we could always try and introduce Chopin to a girl oh great so he gets his heart broken again no way the best thing is just leave him on his own let him stare moodily at the scenery 
food always cheers you up, Beethoven. What if I made him a Canary Islands dish of roasted cornmeal and a spicy garlic sauce? Do you mind if I ask if either of you guys has any idea how to put up a tent? Well, no, not as far as I can remember. Me neither. So where have the rest of the team got to? Hey, 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 Chopin, wake up, kid, wake up! Huh? We're just about to film the most important sequence, so we need the harp. Okay, so take it, it's just over there. Over there? What are you talking oh! about? Oh! Uh? The professor's harp has disappeared, what are we gonna do? But my harp? Where's my harp, Chopin? It was right here, maybe it's in the truck. Oh. No, it's not here. It can't just have disappeared into thin air. Well, someone must have come along the road, saw the harp, and then decided to steal it. No way! Impossible! I'm sorry, Chopin. I don't want to make you feel guilty, but it must have happened that way. Some thieves came along, saw that you were fast asleep, took a liking to my harp, and decided to steal it for themselves. Impossible! And he didn't even realize. Poor Chopin. He's really gone and done it this time, that's for sure. Shumbla! Okay, guys, I guess we just gotta find that harp, or that's it! Split up and search everywhere. Oh, goodness, I just knew something would go wrong! Hey, maybe it's in here! Or in here! Or in here, maybe! Okay, listen up, guys. Maybe it would make more sense if we all split up and looked in different places. What do you think? What's the matter? It's the harp! The harp's disappeared! What a catastrophe! What a disaster! A catastrophe and disaster? Yeah, catastrophe and disaster. Oh, well, there's nothing more that we can do. Maybe we should notify the police about all this. He's right. Somebody should go for the police. Leave it to me. I sure hope the police don't give Chopin a hard time. I don't understand how all this happened. Wasn't Chopin supposed to be looking after the harp? It's nobody's fault, really. Chopin was supposed to be looking after the harp, but unfortunately he fell asleep and someone came along the road and took it. I told you, no one could have come along the road. I'd have heard them coming. Why don't... Here come the police. Okay, boys, just keep back out of the way while we handle this. Not huh? you. The police are gonna want to ask you a few questions, boy. Buenos dias, my friends. Now, who is responsible for this mess? He's right here. This kid. Oh, goodness. I just knew something would go wrong. I don't know what we're gonna do, Verdi. If we don't find the heart, we can't leave Tenerife. Because without the heart, we can't finish the video, right? So that's that. We gotta try and find that heart, Mozart. Huh? That's no good. The police won't let us interfere. What we should be doing is finding a way to cheer Chopin up. This heart business has hit him pretty hard. I think Verdi's right. Okay, guys, let's get with it. Operation Cheer Up Chopin. Okay, Chopin, cheer up. Here we go. I got the answer to all your problems right here on a plate. Oh, really? I couldn't get any cornmeal or make a spicy garlic sauce, so I bought you the speciality of my father's restaurant, Spaghetti alla Traviata. Huh? Ugh. Hey, what's the matter? You trying to tell me that you don't like it or something? I told you that cooking him a meal was no good, Verdi. It's a well-known fact that depression always takes away your appetite. Guys, I've discovered something! Mega hyper cool! That wouldn't be to do with Miss Mirror Melinda, would it? <laughs> Quietly. Huh? Hey, just look at that. Look! Miss Mirror Melinda dressed like a normal person. Perhaps you guys wouldn't mind telling me who you're spying on here? Yeah, well, who are you spying on? Hey, like, what's with all the spying? Get out! I, I wasn't spying, I was just leaving. Whoa! Beethoven, what exactly do you think you're doing? Well, I thought it might go off if nobody ate it, and I hate wasting good food. Did you see Miss Mirror Melinda dress as a girl? Yeah, she caught Bill and us spying on her. Hey, guys, never mind Miss Mira Melindo. What's all that got to do with the theft of the harp? Well, nothing at all, I guess. I suggest the best thing we can do is go back to our original plan and try to cheer up Chopin. Yeah, well, how are we going to do that? Don't worry. Just leave it to me. Beauty of the scenery and the wonders of Mother Nature. Come on, soon you'll be able to see the wonderful view on the other side. That's it, Beethoven. I refuse to go any further. There's only another 200 meters to go. Don't bother. 
I don't know how you can take all this hiking, Beethoven, what with you being so fat and all. Hey! I'm not fat, I'm well built. Hey, what's that song? It's coming from that house over there. The wind's blowing it in our direction. What kind of song is it? It's an Isa, a typical song of the Canary Islands. Really nice, isn't it? I've never heard one like that before. Oh, I have. In fact, I heard Mr. Spleen whistling exactly the same song the other day. Chopin, I'd like to introduce you to two friends of mine. They're on vacation and they brought their surfboards with them. So you want to go catch a wave? I don't know how to surf, Mozart, and besides, I had the heart stolen right out from under my nose. Oh, boy. Uh, Chopin's a great friend of mine. He's a bundle of laughs once you get to know him. Hey, what about a game of volleyball? Great idea! Chopin's a champion volleyball player. I'm tired and I'm really not interested. You go ahead. There you are. What did I tell you? I told you he's great. Me for a moment, Beethoven, will ya? I'll be right back. Help oh, us hi. out, Chopin. What can we do to cheer you up? You really shouldn't worry about it, Mozart. Okay, so I'm sad, but it's natural to be sad, just as natural as it is to be happy. And sometimes it even feels good to be sad. If it were sometimes, I'd understand and agree with you, but you're always sad. Look, being sad is just as good as being happy. That's why music like this was composed in the first place. That's what it's there for. Now I'm fine. You go and play, and maybe I'll join you. <laughs> in the depths of despair only a few minutes ago. Sure, I was a little depressed, but really I was thinking, and I find that being sad helps me think. Try it, it can really help, you know? Well, like I said, I got thinking, and then an idea came to me. Now I think I've got the answer to the mystery surrounding the stolen heart. You think you got the answer? So what is it? Hey guys, look over there, it's Call Me Bill. He looks like he's gone undercover, judging by the sunglasses and hat. Let's huh? see where he's going. Hey guys. Are you going to listen to what I have to say or not? Wait! Hey, look, he's going up to Miss Mira Melindo. What do you think he's going to do to her? Uh, please excuse me for talking to you outside of working hours, but... What's wrong with him? Oh, gee, well, that's obvious. I just wanted to tell you that I'm madly in love with you and... Uh, oh, super cool. Just call me Bill if you want. I already knew that Call Me Bill wasn't the guilty party. Well, how come? Well, after the robbery, I saw Miss Mira Melindo and Call Me Bill both come rushing down the mountain. They wanted to see what had happened. There's no way they had time to drag the harp all the way to the top of the tidy and hide it there. Shumbla, that's right. So in that case, who is guilty? Well, like I said before, it's impossible that a car could have come along, seen me asleep, then stolen the harp, because the noise of the engine would have woken me up. Hey, guys, I'm just seeing something. Come on. Quiet, Bertie. Wait a minute. Right, Chopin, go on. It was well planned. The harp wasn't stolen by accident. This was too meticulous. I still don't see how they could have got the harp away if they didn't have a car. The harp weighs too much for one person to carry it away. Mozart's right. That harp's far too heavy. You need two people to carry any distance. Now I understand. That explains melancholic. That explains everything, including what I just saw. And what is it you just saw? Come with me. Hey, wait a minute. You gonna listen to what I have to say? Hey, you two, wait a minute! Wait, hey, wait up! Is this how you thank Professor Solfa for everything he ever taught you? What are you talking about? You don't think this is the professor's harp, do you? Well, what else could it be, a piano? We got it from the prop store. Call Me Bill says we can't finish the video without a harp, so we wanted to see if this one would be... So you're not the thieves either? No, the thief used a vehicle, but no cars went by. The vehicle was our very own truck. I don't understand. It's simple. 
While I was asleep, somebody grabbed hold of the harp and just put it in the back of our truck. That way, I wouldn't have heard a noise. Okay, but who did it? Mr. Spleen, of course! Not, Not Mr. Mr. Spleen! Oh, Mr. Spleen! Of course it was Mr. Spleen. If you remember what happened, he was the one who looked inside the truck. He looked inside and said there was nothing in there. And then, while you guys were worrying about what was going to happen, he drove the truck away with the harp inside, see? Before going to the police, he dropped the harp off at the house of the person who had engaged his services. Well, that fits perfectly. It was Mr. Spleen's idea in the first place to shoot the whole video here on Tenerife. Yeah, and Spleen was also the one who insisted that we work a harp into our song somehow. Which was the perfect excuse to get Professor Solver's harp in the video. By the way, where's Mr. Spleen got to? He doesn't seem to have been around here much lately. Yeah, and where do you think he disposed of the harp, Chopin? I think I know where it is. Hey, Beethoven, do you remember that ISA that Mr. Spleen was whistling the other day when he came back with the police? Yeah, yeah, I do. And remember, we heard exactly the same song coming from the house that we saw on our walk. Yeah, that's right. And do you think it might be stretching things too far to suggest that Mr. Spleen heard that song at the house where he left the harp? Not too far at all. And even if it were, it's worth a try. Let's go! How are we going to get inside the house? Try knocking at the door? Yeah, we knock on the door and say, excuse me for bothering you, but do you happen to know if there's a harp thief living here? How about breaking in through a window? Well, that ain't very smart. What if this is the wrong house? No, this isn't the wrong house. This is where the harp is. There's absolutely no doubt in my mind. No, why are you so sure, Mozart? Because this guy looks like he's a specialist in guarding stolen harps. Huh? <laughs> Well, all's well that ends well, Spleen. I knew I could rely on you to bring me the instrument I've been searching for at last. And, uh, you did say it was worth a million dollars, didn't you? Yes. <laughs> My collection is the best in the world now, the very best. Well, I hope you enjoy it, sir. Hello, Mr. Huh? Spleen. Good to huh? see you again. I found these medals lurking out here in the garden. Oh, goodness me, I just knew something would go wrong. Who are they? These are the people in the video I was making, Melancholic and the Mozart Band. I hired you to bring me that harp. I didn't want you to bring the whole recording outfit with you. Well, it's not exactly the whole recording team. I mean, these are just the musicians. You brought more than you bargained for, Mr. Spleen. See, I followed the boys here. And I brought the television cameras. We didn't want to miss the show. Oh, hype is super awesome. Television? Oh, oh, oh. oh, no, not television. Can't oh, we be discreet? So oh, no. Well, dear gentlemen, now who is responsible for this mess? Who? He is. Oh, he is. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to shoot the last scene. Everybody stand by. The Drago's still there. The Drago? Yeah, this tree here is the famous dragon tree of Icod. It's been here for 3,000 years. Not bad. A 3,000-year-old tree. Wow, that was planted just a little before my time. Hey, what's the matter now, Chopin? Come on, cheer up. How can I cheer up, Mozart? This is the last shot. It means we've all got to leave this wonderful island. Schumbla, that really is a reason to be sad. OK, everyone, position. And action. One end. Two end. Cut. Schumbla, these shots are getting shorter and shorter. Have you done the shot already? But we weren't even in it that time. Well, boys, it's time for us all to say goodbye to this wonderful island. We've got to be going home. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, my goodness. I really am such a scatterbrain. What have you done? I'm afraid I've been putting the tapes in the wrong way round. You mean to tell me that nothing I've shot is any good and we've got to stay on this island and shoot the whole thing all over again? Oh, my darling, that's super hyper cool. Yeah! <laughs> It was not Chopin himself who dubbed this work the sad study. When he composed it, Chopin was barely 20, having just left behind all his friends and family to face the wars of his native Poland, 